big so everyone can see it, but I had to bring it here tonight. Um, we had to have a question on badges, of course we did. You know, I spent a lot of my time campaigning for these animals. Um, I just really wanted to say a few words about it, because the badger has some of the toughest protection under the law of any species in this country, but it's also probably the most demonized and persecuted. Um, we lose about 50,000 of these animals a year on the road. That's just because they follow scent trails, they've got very poor eyesight, and they'll move across the same roads year in, year out, and our cars hit them. GPS is actually making it worse, because GPS has taken us down all these narrow roads we never thought existed, that the badgers have to itself lie in before we come flying through in the morning and kill it as well. So we're losing a large number as a result of that. Planning and building causes huge problems to badgers. They can't be easily moved. We find badgers turning up all over the place because they're being pushed out by housing developments in particular, and they turn up in other people's gardens, and they turn up sleeping on the cars and everything else. So their sets and their homes are being destroyed. We have protection under the law because of baiting, but baiting still goes on. It's actually a new generation of people getting involved in illegal gambling, syndicates, breeding dogs, and Andy and the League Against Cool Sports will be aware of this, and they're still sending those dogs down the sets to rip them apart. And if that wasn't bad enough, the government so far has killed just under 68,000 of them, spending 50 million pounds of taxpayers' money, the vast majority of which have no TV at all, and they've shown no evidence that it's actually reducing bovine TV. So that sort of sets in a context why it is that I get so passionate about trying to protect these beautiful animals. And by the way, if any of you have had the opportunity to see badgers in the wild, they are the most beautiful, incredible animals. Most of us only ever see them dead by the side of the road. So that brings me to the question tonight, please. I think she's out there from Gillian Foxcroft. Gillian, you out there? Yeah. Okay, can we get the, um... <coughs> the mic to Gillian, please? Thank you. Thank you, Dominic, um, and I'd like to thank you and Chris for coming to Hen Harry Day in Derbyshire last Sunday. Brilliant day, thank you. A week today, DEFRA are going to announce another set of some very expensive badger cull zones. Do you think that the government should be allowing a badger cull in Derbyshire this September when Derbyshire Wildlife Trust has developed the largest, most successful badger vaccination programme in the country, supported by nearly £300,000 worth of government funds over the last five years, we could see vaccinated badgers being shot in just a few weeks' time. Yeah, and just uh, again, before... Thank you very much. speaking on TV about this yesterday. Um, if we go all the way back to Steve Hilton when he was wandering around Downing Street without socks and shoes on when David Cameron was Prime Minister, um, I thought one of the better ideas he came up with was the Big Society, and I remember when that was launched at Battersea Power Station. Um, Badger vaccination is the Big Society. There's nowhere in the world where you would find hundreds of people who would volunteer with their own money and their own time to work with farmers and landowners, lugging cages around, digging them and baiting them, to vaccinate and release these animals. You wouldn't find it in France, Italy, Germany, America. It's very uniquely British and it's something we should be very proud of. There are people day and night working in counties like Oxfordshire and Derbyshire with farmers, building up mutual respect and confidence that has largely broken down because of a policy that's being driven by the government to cull and not vaccinate. The worst aspect of vaccination over culling to a degree for me is that vaccination works. We know the science shows us that if you vaccinate a badger without the disease, you can reduce it by about 73%, and that gets passed to the cubs as well. Whereas far, you know, killing indiscriminately badgers, we've got no real good evidence that it's actually making an impact. And half of the badgers <coughs> we're killing at that 50 million pounds are being trapped in the same way that we were trapped to vaccinate. And the only difference is the contractors kill them with a shotgun at point blank range rather than vaccinating and releasing them. So I fully understand how angry and how despair people in Derbyshire feel if coal contracts are starting to come in and kill badgers that have been vaccinated. And by the way, just to finish, nearly half a million pounds of taxpayers' money has been spent in Derbyshire. Your money in this room vaccinated those badgers. So this is a critical point, in my view, for where this policy goes. I'm going to start with you because you're the agency that lies in it. I know your personal opinion on this, and, and that needs to be reflected, but does it worry you that we're at this point that we could be killing badgers in that way in, in, in Derbyshire? Yes, uh, it would um, be good to have a joined-up policy, and I don't know the details of the licensing 
decision that's gone on and whether there is a read across between the coal and the vaccination, so I don't know those details. Uh, but just to uh, lay out some of the basics of this um, in terms of where Natural England sits. So we have a number of um, functions that we discharge as a public body. One is to be a government advisor. Uh, another is to be a regulator implementing laws passed by Parliament to, for example, designate sites of special scientific interest. And the third thing we do under a framework agreement with DEFRA is take ministerial direction to implement certain policy decisions. One of those policy decisions taken in 2013, long before I joined Natural England, was to support a cull of badgers as part of a strategy to control bovine tuberculosis. So bovine TB, and again, you know, we, 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 we probably don't have any dairy or beef farmers here this evening, stick your hand up if you are one, um, but th there is immense pain and suffering being caused to people who make their living out of cattle rearing as a result of TB getting into their herds. And then we get into a discussion around, you know, to what extent was it badgers, what other things could we do? Uh, could it be down to, um, you know, better control of cattle movements? Is it to do with biosecurity on farms? All these things then come onto the table and it very quickly gets horrendously complicated. So amid all that complication, there was a decision taken in 2013 to embark on a badger cull, and under our framework agreement with DEFRA, we were required to then license the killing of those animals, which as you say, Dominic, are highly protected. And so this is a function that we have across the piece. So if you have bats in your belfry and you want to put some new slates on or something, you come to us for a license. If you want to vaccinate badgers, you also come to us for a license. So there's lots of things that go with this licensing function, but it's a function that was triggered in this case by ministers who said they wanted to back this cull. And so we take our direction from there, from the chief veterinary officer. So we are a conservation agency. We are not a disease control agency. So we work in a space which is not our core business because we're not culling badgers for conservation reasons. We're not saying that there's too many badgers from the point of view of ground nesting birds or anything else. We're doing it because we've been required by ministerial direction to do this. So we license in that space and that is something which is subject to constant review. Now since I arrived at Natural England I've been taking a very strong interest in this. Uh, before I arrived there at the select committee hearing where the MPs scrutinised my suitability for this role, they asked me what I would do about this because I had expressed some strong views on the subject and I said I would look at the science. And so that's what I've been doing. I'm going to do more of that. And I want to understand more about what the alternatives might be. And one thing that I am uh, quite clear on, and I need to go and speak to DEFRA colleagues more about this to understand what we might do, but I would like to see a proper field scale vaccination trial that's done on a big enough uh, landscape to know you know, what the difference is between that and uh, the alternative approach is being taken at the moment. And so, you know, that's something I will explore. I can't make any announcements or any commitments, but it's something that does appear to me at the moment to be somewhat of a gap in the picture is to understand what role vaccination could be playing to control what is a pretty awful disease. And if, if you're working in farming these days, it's a pretty miserable sector. There's more suicides there than anywhere else in terms of our economy and people working in different sectors of the economy. So let's please not forget the people who are on the rough end of this in terms of the dairy farmers and the beef farmers because we do need to be uh, taking them along on the journey as well. But for me, as a regulator and as an advisor and a policy delivery body, I want to look more closely at the science and I want to understand if there's, if there's things that we could do which wouldn't involve this level of um, killing of badgers. But I don't know the answer yet, but I'm looking at it. That's fine, and I'll move on in a moment. I just wanted to ask you, because one of the things we've raised, obviously, with ministers and officials is that the Sir Charles Godfrey TV policy review that was published in November has still yet to be answered. The Labour Party are saying they will stop the issuing of all new coal licences. That's the policy and they're announcing it. I've been working on it. My view would be that that should be matched by the government because there is no justification for issuing any new licences at this time until at least you've responded to the Godfrey Review, until at least you have a better understanding of where vaccination fits with Kelly. And to be fair, you're right. You need a proper trial, but you've got a trial zone in Derbyshire. If you just go right in there and allow coal contracts start killing those badges, that's 
quite frankly, insane. <laughs> um, what I hope... And I will be about five million pounds. The police commissioners are jumping up and down saying that's a waste of money. It is. Police money and budgets are stretched all over the place. We don't have good data to show that it's working. We know that half the animals are being controlled by a controlled shooting method that the independent expert panel the government set up in the first year said was ineffective and cruel. Five, ten minutes to kill them. The British Veterinary Association has said since 2014 that it would not support it, even though it's been expanded. So, you know, there are fundamental problems for this policy to continue. I know where you are, and I know you can't be drawn any further. I just hope you'll reflect on it, because you are in a situation, I think, where you have some moral authority. You've yeah. spoken clearly about your concerns when you went through the job, and I think spoke very eloquently about it, the Epis Lecony. We really need you, Tony, to say, listen, guys, you know, in my position now, we need to stop and hold on here. We can't just plow on. Because I can tell you, and I had a meeting in Deptford the other day, and the civil servants just looked at me so guilty, we're just going to keep doing this, aren't we? So, you know, this is the problem. We feel very frustrated. You can understand that. No, for sure. And, uh, you know, we, we, we will have uh, a further look at this. Um, one of the calls on Natural England, um, however, just to bear in mind, you know, the, the limits of our influence and, and abilities on this, um, you know, if, if Natural England took the view that actually we're not going to issue any more licenses, you know, what do we think would happen next? Mm. So I'm operating under delegated powers, under direction mm. from DEFRA. Um, we had our licensing powers removed in relation to general licenses yep. earlier this year, mm. and I, I wouldn't be surprised if that kind of um, conclusion might follow you know, us um, going down the route that some people are asking me to do, because they are asking me to do that. So just in terms of the practicalities of this, I think it all comes back to the science yes. and understanding what is going to be the best way for us to be able to uh, proceed in a way that's going to protect uh, people whose livelihood depends upon rearing cattle. And you know, we've talked about meat and dairy already, uh, but there are people whose livelihoods depend upon that. And I, for one, don't want to put anybody out of business. I do. I just want, as a taxpayer, even if I didn't care about badgers, it's freaking loop to vaccinate a load of badgers and then completely cut across that initiative and then shoot them. I'm sorry, that is, even if you don't care about badgers, that's freaking loop. You got me as a campaigner, really, because it was you that spoke out about this and started. I think, it, to be fair, this was one of the first things that you went public with about your anger about what's happening in government and countryside, which has led you on a, a path, I would say, to become more outspoken. Where do you see Badger Culling now from your expectancy? I, I think that whether it's in our lives, whether it's in our you know, culture, whether it's in our politics, we should be making best informed decisions. And in order to make those best informed decisions, we employ independent scientists to conduct the work. It's peer reviewed and it's published. And then we should read it, understand it, and make our decisions based upon it. And if that had been happening, the budget, the budget cult would never have started. The fact is that, and this is not Tony or Natural Indian's fault in any way, shape, or form, is that DEFRA is open to an enormous amount of powerful lobbying by the farming fraternity. That's the bottom line. And that's why, unfortunately, the badger culling issue has nothing to do with science, it's very little to do with sense, it has an enormous amount to do with the power of political lobbying. And it's a travesty that will stain and tattoo the reputation of British conservation for a very long time. Thank you. I'm going to move on to another issue.